In today's gospel, we hear the well-known story of the rich young man. In this story, Jesus tells us the dangers of putting things in the way of God's love. It begins with the rich young man wanting to know the best way to ensure eternal life. Isn't that the question that most of us have asked in our own prayers? Jesus tells him that there are guidelines to help him. God's order for human life has already been revealed in the Ten Commandments. The young man says he knows all about these commandments and has kept them all of his life. Jesus then looked at this young man with love. He knew the unspoken thoughts in his hearts and knew that he was sincere and honest in his statement. But he also saw a young man who was wearing all this fine clothing and expensive jewelry. Jesus knew that this young man was obviously sincere, but he also knew that he had never been put to the test. He was well-groomed, well-fed, and well-protected from the hardships of life. Jesus saw that he was in danger of letting his possessions take possession of him. All his beautiful things were getting in the way of God's kingdom. Jesus knew that for this young man to be a disciple, he had to face reality. So Jesus tells him with love what he has to do. Go and sell it all. Give it all to those who are in real need. And then come follow me. He told this rich young man to put his trust in God's providence. Choose voluntary poverty and let God provide for your earthly needs. Well, the young man was visibly shaken. He did not come expecting Jesus to challenge him. He wanted Jesus to approve of him. Like all pious Jews, he believed that his wealth and possessions were proof that he was justified and blessed by God. He thought his exemplary piety would win Jesus' approval and gain an assurance from him that by following the law, he would win for himself a place in God's kingdom. But Jesus was asking him to put aside all those things that confer status and power over others. Jesus was telling him that God did not give him his wealth to prove that he was blessed, but so that he could use it to bless others. Jesus' approval came with too high a price. If he wanted eternal life, then he must put it before all of his riches. He had to choose between his happiness for now and his happiness forever. Faced with that decision, the young man went away grieving because he knew he could not pay that price. We are very much like this rich young man. We too don't want Jesus to challenge us. We want him to say that everything is all right, that we are already doing the best we can, and that there is no need for us to do anything more. We want Jesus to say that he loves us just the way we are. But it's precisely because Jesus loves us that he challenges us. He wants our spiritual light to shine out to grow in leaps and bounds, not to be hidden under a bushel basket of wealth and false security. What he is saying is that we spend far too much time and energy making safe and comfortable lives for ourselves and not enough ensuring our eternal life with God. We may protest as the disciples did and ask, if giving up everything is a condition of discipleship, then who will be able to answer this call of Jesus? Well, there have been many who have done just that. St. Francis of Assisi stripped himself of every stitch of rich clothing his wealthy merchant father had given him. Mother Teresa gave up a comfortable life in a religious order to help those abandoned to die on the streets of Calcutta. These saints were not alone. Many followed their example and joined them in their vision to enrich the world with the love of Christ. They discovered what the rich young man did not, that, like Jesus and his disciples, those who give up everything enter into a special relationship with the community whom they serve. The community will in turn provide them with everything they need to live. 
Now, most of us will not be called into such radical discipleship, but this gospel reminds us of the generous hospitality that was practiced in those early Christian communities. All Christians should think seriously about their stewardship of money and material possessions. We think our good lives are a reward for our faith, a blessing from God, and that we are free to do with it as we please. Resisting the pleasures of a consumer culture which generates the perpetual need for more and newer possessions is very difficult. Our excess consumption deprives others of resources they need to survive. It is a hidden form of structural greed that wastes the world's resources and creates suffering for others that we may never meet. Unless something or someone comes along to challenge us, we will never see that when we chain ourselves to possessions, we are not free to follow Jesus. Let us now join our prayers together in thankful praise to God for the continuing gifts of grace and strength. That we may have the faith to follow the gospel and to trust that God will act to bring all things to his glory, we pray to the Lord. The Lord that God will be our guide and our strength as we try and live according to Christ's teachings, we pray to the Lord. The Lord that firmly rooted in prayer, we will find positive ways to serve God and our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord that a spirit of thankfulness and joy may be manifest in the lives of those in our television community. We pray to the Lord. Lord that we may work hard to be good witnesses of the faith for others so that they may come to encounter Jesus in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty Father, thank you for the simple gifts of life. Help us to see what we really need for happiness here on earth and to help others to find their way to eternal happiness with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become the bread of life. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Goodness with this water and wine, when we who share in Christ's humanity, come to share with his divinity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Blessed yes. be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to see the gifts we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Lord, help us who offer you this sacrifice of praise to follow the example of St. Philip. Keep us always cheerful in our work for the glory of your name and the good of our neighbor. Grant this through Christ our Lord. 